started our hunt for the world's strongest man in 1994 with 16 contenders in the heat which have given us so much excitement leading into this final. But we're going to start by looking back at one of the biggest shocks of those early competitions, and that was when Gary Taylor of Wales, the reigning champion, failed to make it to the qualifying round. And so it was Forbes Cam from Scotland and the giant Joe Onasai who qualified. The two qualifiers were both very experienced campaigners. Magnus Van Magnussen totally dominated heat three. Finland's Riku Kiri qualified with ease from heat four together with Herod Barden Horse. So a real mixture of youth, experience and physiques comprises our finalists for 1994. Herit has tremendous support in Sun City and loves intense competition. As far as the weights are concerned, he says, the heavier the better. Neighbouring Namibia have found a new star. Anton Boucher, who despite being the youngest in the whole contest, is convinced he can win. Forbes Cowan, representing Scotland, produced some of the best performances of his life to take him through to this final. Apart from having the biggest arms in the world, 26 inches, Manfred Herbal's talent in strength events is truly awesome. Riku Kiri from Finland was third last year. He's desperate to take the title this time, and judging by his form, he could do just that. Magnus continues Iceland's great traditions in this competition. He's a former champion and has been runner-up for the last two years. Joe Onasai is one of the biggest men in the final. He effectively eliminated Gary Taylor, the reigning champion, in the first heat. If you think Joe is large, wait until you've seen former title holder Ted van der Paale, seven feet tall and 25 stone. The huge Sun City complex comprises hotels, golf courses, jungle, lakes and a man-made beach. Daytime temperatures here can soar to over 100 degrees, so holding the final at night is a welcome relief to those competitors who aren't used to the heat. The first event is the harness and rope pull, and among those psyching themselves up, Joe Onasai and South African Herit Badenhorst. The safari trucks make an appearance in this competition once again, three of them weighing six tons altogether to be pulled in this first event. Magnus van Magnussen to go first. So far we've seen competitors pulling the trucks with their arms only and with their legs. This time it's a combination of the two, judged as always by Douglas Edmonds, over the 25 meter course in the Ready. fastest possible time. To the stream. Magnus, although very powerful, is one of the lightest men, a mere 20 stone, so he could find this event a problem. I'm not sure how much help that rope is going to be. Most of the strength to move the trucks will be coming from the legs. being taken back to the start the easy way with the engine switched on and Magnussen a confident start in this first event. Here's the big man Ted van der Parra who likes these pulling events having won a similar truck pull in Iceland two years ago. Baden Horst looking Ready. relaxed, he goes next. Stream. Ted looking really determined. The most difficult part of this course getting the huge load underway. Working the legs hard, and you can see how hard he's working the arms as well. He actually won this truck tour in heat two, but said the load he was pulling was too light. If that's the case, the extra two turns suiting him very well. The time to beat is in the top left-hand corner. He's just outside. That's tough. This is one of the best all-round tests of strength that there is. Every muscle, including the heart, working so hard. Really? Get the strain! <laughs> Eric underway. The time to beat still Magnuson's 33.64. Eric massively good. He's doing well here, staying very low. There wasn't a truck pull in his heat, but he's really got this one under control now. This is going to be a good time. Look at that, just 
time for second place. A good start for South Africa in this year's final. Forbes Cowan goes next. That was a hard pull, really. And the rope is quite thin as well. So you struggle, you know. It's like slipping through your hands. But it was, it was quite hard. Ready! Take the string! Forbes certainly not afraid of hard work, but I think he might have a chuckle to himself hearing Herrick say it's only quite hard. He looks tiny in front of these three trucks. Forbes really has got his head down now, giving it absolutely everything. The Scot has had great support here in the heat, and now in his first ever final. He was just a reserve last year. Less than a second outside. This first event is so tight at the top. Forbes in fourth place. All these times are very, very close. Did you expect that? I knew all the teams would be pretty close. In fact, it would probably be tens of seconds that will win it. Split the points up. You're not nervous now, are you? No. No time for that. Ready! Take the strain! The only time Joe is interested in is, of course, Magnuson's lead. It's been threatened, but not surpassed. And Joe's time is already getting close to 30 seconds. He's at least got 10 minutes to go. That's surprising. I would have thought that with 350 pounds of body weight, this would be a good event for the Samoan, but his mobility is really suspect. Those tribal tattoos really need to produce a bit of magic now. He's close to the finish, but really struggling. Almost standing still. This is a real baptism of fire in this final. 55.48 for fifth place, but I don't think he'll stay in that position for very long. And Magnus's lead looking safer and safer. Ready! Take the straight! <whistles> Anton Boucher, the sixth man to go. Now he is very fit. And he'll keep that 135 kilogram physique going until he drops. Seems to be slipping just a little bit on the surface. Boucher's muscles are not as well defined as St. Manfred Herbal, but they're so thick and dense. He's well outside the leader's time. They have to be content with just putting on a side for the time being. Like Cowan and Joe, he's a first timer at World's Strongest Man. 46.48 seconds, and that relegates on a side for six. Richard Geary of Finland going through his normal ritual of sniffing smelling salts before an event. Riku, six feet three inches tall and 23 Take the stones. Just leans on the harness. Who took a little stumble there? That's going to lose him a little bit of time. There's only Manfred Herbal to go, so Riku could get some good points here. You really don't get a proper idea as to how big these guys are. Believe me, if you came and sat down on your sofa at home, there wouldn't be room for anybody else. He's massive. Every part of his body is beginning to ache. He's going to have to work hard now. The time is slipping away. He's not going to beat it. Nicky's wife on the right beyond the finish, really shouting. 36.69. In hopes and the capable hands of Manfred Herbal. I think he'll be surprised that Kiri didn't go faster. It's up to Manfred, always the extrovert, and Magnus can't take his eyes off the clock. If I stay, even if I get second place in this event, that's a good score for me. But you can't come any less than second. Okay. Hooray! Get the strain! This man is very athletic when it comes to events which involve leg movement. And those arms are so, so strong. It's a very good rhythm he's got going. There's no point in trying to take big strides. Short and sharp, that's the technique. Well, this is definitely up with Magnuson. Six tons of metal and bodies really moving now. We could be seeing the fastest time. Manfred has really turned it on. Under 30 seconds. He got it. He certainly did. The Austrian is off to a flying start with Icelander Magnus for Magnussen in hot pursuit. But with seven events still to go, a lot can change. Last year you suffered a little bit at the end. Your arms were aching and they were very sore. How are they now? I feel pretty okay. I'll probably recover in proper time. 
and then we're up for the next event. Big points in the first event, that's what you wanted. Yeah, it's certainly a cushion and it's a, it's a great start, I just love it. <laughs> the crowd loved it too. Well, the next event is one which could be just as exciting, Samson's Barrow. Two small flatbed trucks weighing two tons complete with cargo. And it's going to be Herod Badenhorst and Ted van der Parra lifting the trucks like a wheelbarrow. They will race each other over the course and the fastest time once again will decide yeah. the eight points. Well, the referee has already allowed them to use some wrist straps to hold the grip. Badenhorst on the left and Ted who may find this lifting difficult due to his height. Doug Edmonds, he helped design most of these events. Okay. Ready! Left! Brakes! The shout of brakes to ensure the drivers release the foot pedal once the truck is up, and Herrett has dropped it already. He's back up and he's going ahead of the Dutchman. The South African looks as though he's racing the way now, and Ted is finding this one hard. He's just come to a total standstill. Herrett moves and then away with his first team, staying perfectly upright. 20 points for the first time in the game. Very solid in the game. Looking back down the track, Ted is injured, having only gone halfway down the course. Forbes Cowan now with Joe Onasai alongside. Strapped on and ready to go. Lift! Brakes! Onasai not on balance, he's lost it already, but Forbes is racing away. Saw how good he was at this sort of event in week one, and he strolled down his course with a 15 stone weight in his hand. Joe, in fact, being looked after by the doctor, but certainly Forbes Cowan is the man of the moment. When we saw you in the heats carrying very, very heavy things long distances, I think you knew and we knew that you were going to be good at this event. Well, that's as usual quite a good event for me. Uh, there's a lot of tension, a lot of nerves, it's just keeping it together. I kept it together, so I'm happy. Cowan's time, now the target for the big fin, Riku Kiri. Anton Boucher, like garden horse, very strong in the deadlift. He's right next to Riku. We're halfway through this event now, and okay. it's good news for Cowan. Ready, the lift, break. Off they go, and they're together at five metres. Riku's wife once again giving him some verbal in the background. Here he is, he's scrolling in the way now. He's really turned on the power. Look at the time. 14.26. This event just gets faster and faster. Boucher is struggling towards the end. 23.76 for four plays. Now, will that be quick enough? Edmonds waiting for the last two contestants. Magnussen, eager to get a win under his belt early in the competition. And the man who won that first event, Austrian Manfred Herbel. He likes to get the signal. The extrovert versus okay, the quiet there you man. Go. That's that man. Manfred, who's been so close in years Ready, gone by. Left! Brakes! <laughs> well, like the previous two, they're together at five metres. They're together at ten. In fact, Magnus was pipped at the post by Manfred. It was a win for Riku this time, but two injuries in this event to Ted and Joe, they failed to finish. After event two, Manfred Herbel is still hanging on to the top slot. The Finn Riku Kiri is climbing up the table, but Samoan Joe Onasai is struggling in his first World's Strongest Man competition. For two events down and you're in the lead, you must be feeling quite good about it. Not good enough. I came only second in the second event. So my predictions were wrong. This next event, how are you going to do? You like it or you don't like it? I hate it. 
because that makes me look like caveman and uh, we're gonna go out of this event like cavemen with like broken backs and scars all over so I don't really like this event now I, I would prefer the log which is proper lift and it's easier to judge Ted what is the problem uh, I turned my calf further than in the qualifications it's the same injury it's come back but it's come back worse so I have to retire now it's over finished three months of uh, practicing and training very hard flew over by plane for 12 hours and all for for nothing so Ted goes out and on a size fitness bad foot as we move into the rock lift which Manford and quite a few of the other competitors don't like at all 100 kilos the weight that faces Forbes Cowan he's lying in fifth place overall now this is just like what? a weightlifting competition except the competitors given 90 seconds to complete each successful lift as opposed to three separate attempts the difficulty here of course the awkward shape of the weight on a side now but we still don't know if he's recovered from the last event he's very strong in overhead lifts as we saw with the log in week one Balance here is important. And Simone is making hard work of it. He needs this one to stay in the competition. In the middle, Joel. Oh my goodness, I hope he's got a good dentist. He could really do himself some damage here. Oh, he's had enough. That looked very painful indeed. He is looking relaxed enough after winning event two. This would be a very easy weight if it were in a gym, on a bar, but these rocks are not easy as you've seen already. Now, he must try to get the hands underneath. Oh, good that's good. Effort. The rock was in the right position. Uche has passed on this weight, so he must be feeling confident. Not so Manfred, I fear. We heard what he had to say about this event. Looks easy enough, up to the chest, goes above the head. I think he's supposed to be locking out those arms. Well, he likes it. Herit has passed on 100 kilos as well. Now Magnuson. He won this event the last time it was held in World's Strongest Man, two years ago, in appalling conditions in Iceland. Lift. Actually, he is the world record holder for this event with 130 kilos. The hand on this side should be underneath the rock, surely. Well, I'm not sure about the judging of that lift, but Magnuson, with a glint in his eye, walks away happy. A couple of young South African hammer throwers bring in 120 kilos for Forks Cowan, being urged on by Gary Taylor. He's chalked up his hands to ensure a good grip. This rock, 19 stones, almost the same as the man himself. Lift. It's a different shape this time, so perhaps a modified technique required. Just rests it on his knees to get the balance right. Ooh, looks awkward, up onto the chest. He's got the hands in the right position now, though. Up it goes. Oh, he's going to lose it. Now the referee says OK again, and some amusement from Forbes and some queries from the rest. That rock should have come down in front. Still, on we go, and South Africa and Namibia have passed once again, so it's left to Riku Kiri to attempt to hoist 264 pounds. Familiar routine, chest, knees, and then hopefully above the head, but he's lost it. Kiri is eliminated. Magnus and Manford have both been successful at 120 kilos. Forbes attempted 125, he failed. So we move even higher now to 130. That's 20 stones. Lift. Here's Herod Badenhorst. And this will equal Magnuson's world record lift. Goodness knows what the pressure on his back is. He's a real glutton for punishment. Drives it up and it's easy. Definitely a good lift. He shows just how easy it was. Delighted. You made it even more difficult by standing on one leg just for the crowd at the end. Just for the crowd, yeah. It's nice. A lot more to come? I think so, yeah. I think so. There's a, there's a few kilos left there. 
Anton Boucher has to follow that. There's no doubt about this young man's raw strength, but has he got the technique? He's got the hands underneath now. Oh, that is tremendous. And now looking as confident as Barden We might even see him smile yet. Herbal now at the same weight. Absolutely covered in chalk. Look. So far, so good. He needs those 26 inch arms to work for him now, but he's lost it. Well, he's Star got a bandana Wars. for every occasion, but that one could have done with being about three inches thicker. Herbal goes out in the event he hates. Magnus now attempts to join Herret and Anton at the same weight 130 kilos, that's 20 stones. I wonder if he'll use the same technique as before with the right hand high up on the rock. Looks as though that's what he's going for. He presses it and gets it. But once again, was that rock at arm's length and under control? So now we move on to the new world record weight of 135 kilos. That's nearly 300 pounds. Anton looks as though he can't wait to get his hands on it. This would be a great achievement for Boucher if he could lift this one. He's so strong in the arms and shoulders. He's so close to getting it as well. He can't quite finish it off. But he can't finish any worse than third. So good points despite the failure, which actually looked as good as some of the lifts we've seen. The next man under scrutiny will need to be successful if he's to beat Boucher. Magnus behind because of the Namibians' earlier passes. And I'm sure he'll want to hang on to his world record as well. This rock looks longer than some of the rest, so the grip will be even more difficult. Oh, he's trying Badenhorst's technique now on the head. Not this time, though, so he will finish behind Anton, whether Barnenhorst succeeds or fails. So it's left to Herrick to lift this one for a win and a world record. Mum will go crazy if he gets it. He's gone very low, that makes sense. Makes his very strong legs take the early strain. The back is almost bent double again. It's on its way. The signal is yes. Have a new world record and eight points. So there have been three different winners in the first three events. Good points for Anton and Magnus, but Kiri and Onasai surprisingly struggling in the rock lift. Hered, the crowd absolutely loved that. Yeah, that was that was great, you know. For myself as well, it was really, really, very nice. I mean to lift the you know the world record, press it overhead. Not jerk it overhead, press it overhead. It was, you know, for myself, it was uh, really very nice. That performance has left Herrit lying third overall. Above him, just half a point between Manfred Herbel and Magnus Vermagnuson. Already, though, the competition's begun to claim its victims. Ted's out, and Joe's looking increasingly vulnerable. Day one finishes on the same platform as we started for the car walk. And a demonstration that these are not just empty shells, but fully loaded cars weighing 388 kilos each. That's one third of a ton. Forbes Cowan could do with a good finish to his first day. He's lying in fifth place, just ahead of Anton Boucher. Now each man has to lift and walk with this weight over the course, and the fastest time overall wins. The shoulder straps preset for each man's height. Ready. Lift. This was an event that Gary Taylor won in last year's final. Anton already down after just five seconds and all over the runway. Cowan rock steady. Boucher back on his feet and not too far behind. But barring accidents, Cowan is going to win this one. 19.3 and comes crashing down. Anton needs a bit more yet. He finishes over 10 seconds behind the Scots. Disadvantage having to go first once again in this sort of event, but it was a fast time. Well, it had to be fast because Taylor would have just given me a hard time if I had been slow. 
Well, let's just come to you, Coach. Gary, this was an event you won last year. What's the technique? As I told Forbes, at first you should get the balance and then slowly accelerate down the course. Don't try to go too fast, too quickly. It just did, just did that. Brilliant. Eric Bardenhorst wearing the green. And Riku the blue. Both of them looking huge in those cars. Ready! Riku has taken his very high off the ground. And now moving steadily ahead of Herod. The Finn who did this with an injury last year, so he must go better this time. Badenhorst has gone down, that's going to be crucial. Here he miles ahead and look at the time. He rearranges the bodywork with a huge stamp of his fist as Badenhorst struggles on. 23 seconds outside Cowan's time but ahead of Anton and that was hard. Thierry impassive as ever. Onasai has in fact retired from this contest, so there's only going to be three heats, and it will be Herbal and Magnussen again providing the climax. Just half a point difference at the top of the table between the two. Ready! Lift! Manfred getting away quickly. You get the feeling this could be just as close as the wheelbarrow race. Manfred's going a bit close to the centre, he's lost time there. So Magnus has a chance to take this one, 11.73. Herbal is second, another rearrangement of the bonnet by Magnus, and the two fastest times set in the final lap of day one. Magnus finishes on a real high. He gets revenge over Manfred, who beat him in Samson's Barrow. Magnus wins his first event. Forbes makes the top four, but the field is cut to six at the end of the first day. And what a day of competition with moments like this, which may be crucial in deciding the overall title. After that event, Magnus is now half a point ahead of Manfred, with Herit and Riku proving determined challengers. With just six of the original eight competitors left in the contest, it proves how tough it all is. Magnus, congratulations. You almost sprinted with the car there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just went for it. It was win or die. <laughs> well, that has meant that at the end of day one, you're half a point ahead of Manfred in the lead overall. Well, half a point is not much. <laughs> it's half a point between friends, you know. But that was a bit there. I lost this run because it was, it was so fast. And I could see him there. So I thought, well, speed up, speed up. And, and the car came a little to the right. And I had to drop it to take control of it again. That's where I lost my, my time. What about tomorrow? Well, it's going to be good, close competition. Good for you guys, <laughs> not bad for me. <laughs> so after all that, a day off to relax and tend to those aching muscles. Sun City comes to the beach with its own man-made beach and water park. It's even got a wave machine. You fancy yourself as a surfer. Although the resort is hundreds of miles away from the sea, the Valley of the Waves, as it's known, does its best to make you feel like you're on the coast. And under such intense heat, water is a welcome relief. If you're after adventure of a different nature and a feeling brave, you have the option of plunging down a cliff face on a mammoth water slide. At the moment, it seems as though yourself and Magnus are out on your own. Is there anybody else who can come through? Oh, I think Rico will still come through holding because uh, the, the Hercules hold, or whatever you call it now, it's one of his really strong events. I don't think anybody can beat him there. So he's going to get up there. And on the deadlift, I don't know how strong he is there. Might be strong too. Ball push is a strong event. So look, um, I think none of the positions are whatsoever are secured yet. You'll have still to fight until the last event. You can't really afford to mess up no. any events in this next competition, can you? No. Because Manfred's going to have you. <sighs> no, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> well, as Magnus works up his appetite, the competition organisers work on the final preparations for tonight's four events. The centrepiece of the complex is the luxurious Palace Hotel, which towers over the venue for tonight's final. It's a combination of extravagant art and architecture, a fertile oasis in the heart of the African bush. While you're here, it's easy to forget that beyond the boundaries of this fantasy world is the real South Africa. The 
site sits alongside the Pilanesberg National Park, whose scorched earth and wild landscape is home to a wealth of wildlife. And the resort strives to reflect the strength and beauty of the creatures the country is so famous for. It's in this setting that the world's strongest men are preparing to face their final challenge. But it's not to be. Minutes before the competition's to begin, a violent storm erupts. Torrential rain combined with fierce lightning has made conditions too dangerous to proceed. It's decided to postpone the contest until the morning. Event five at last in this amphitheatre. It's a small crowd trying to huddle in the shade. It's 110 degrees Fahrenheit, so can you blame them? For the competitors, it's the Hercules hold, and a huge round of applause for guess who? It's Joe on a side, who's made sufficient recovery to give this event his best shot. Glad to be back, but hoping his body will survive. The test is to see who can hang on to two iron dishes with gold bars inside for the longest. Not real Look gold, up. but they do weigh 15 kilos each, so a total of 130 kilos in each hand for Onasai and the rest. This is really going to test the grip and shoulder strength to the limit. But as Gary said, mental strength is going to be vital to cut out the pain. Onasai benefiting from the enforced rest last night. Over 30 seconds, so not suffering too much at the moment. The arms beginning to shake. 38.3, and I bet those hands are hurting. Anton Boucher over 30 seconds and looking good. He won the axe hold, which showed he had tremendous strength in the shoulders. He looked relaxed enough. He's in the lead, 41.87, that's the time to beat. I'm sure he's going to smile before the final is finished. Come on, Herod, the faithful cry. The time being shouted so he knows exactly what he has to do. Great weightlifters normally do have strong grips. Now that's surprising, only third place and perhaps his worst effort yet. Now look at this, Forbes heading towards the lead. The grip, one of his best assets. This is good for Cowan. Oh my goodness, the pain. Over 50 seconds. The left hand giving way first, but what a great effort. And he's in the lead by a long way. Ted's still in pain of a different sort, but enjoying that performance. Gary said before the event that you would be good at this. What is your strength in this particular event? I don't know, I just seem to have a very good grip, whether it's a farmer's walk or a Hercules hold, my grip doesn't usually let me down. Ricker Keary looks as though he might challenge Forbes, heading towards 40 seconds with ease. Battle scarred from the rock lift, but rock steady with his grip in an event he won last year in Orange. The time being relayed to him, he knows he's close, he's got it. It's by less than a second, and he might have done it again. Not if Manfred gets his way. He's closing in on 30 seconds, helped by those massive shoulders and arms. The fingers will be aching like crazy. He's hanging on for dear life, and that grip is going. 40.3 seconds for Manfred. He's in fourth place. And I think he's unhappy with that result. So it's up to Magnus. Remember, Forbes Cowan lies in second behind Riku, so whatever happens here, the Scot will score heavily. Magnus are not comfortable. He's still got a long way to go. His whole body is shaking. It's just over 43 seconds, so he beats Manfred. Riku literally hangs on to victory number two in this year's final. Forbes gets his highest finish, Manfred his lowest, together with Baden Horst, who had such a good first day. Well, with three events still to go, things are tense at the top of the table, and Magnus for Magnuson can't afford to relax. Riku Kiri is still looking strong, as too are Forbes Cowan and Herrick Baden Horst.
carry on in the crater of this extinct volcano for Event 6, the deadlift. And that's the current situation with poor Forbes Cowan already eliminated, along with Joe, as you can see at the bottom of the caption. The target rapidly increasing beyond 390 kilos, with the remaining lifters playing cat and mouse with passes at various weights. The bar now at 400 kilos, Herit up first, and after that poor result for him in the last event, eager to make amends. A rather unusual piece of apparatus, those glass cases full of coins. The total more now than the weight of those cars we saw earlier. And there's one man who'll be getting out of his suit as soon as the events are over. It's baking hot. Herod using the lifting straps. This is a test of back and leg strength, not just grip. And what a great display. There's a lot more to come by the looks of it from the man who once held the world record for this event in the sport of powerlifting. He strides off the stage. Riku's wife there, looking anxious as always. But it's Manfred Herbel now, not renowned for this event. Strapping himself on so he can channel all his energy into his back and legs. Okay. Lift. Look at the definition in those shoulders. He's got it off the floor, but the legs won't straighten. He can go again. There's no doubt about his upper body strength. The same happens again, so he will finish in around fifth place. If Anton can lift this, Manfred will definitely be in fifth place. But if he fails, Boucher will take that position and move the Austrian up into fourth. Tremendously strong, but the technique letting him down again. Well, he's had enough already. Boucher, a man for the future, but finding it very tough here. Magnus, the Magnussen from Iceland. Magnus now. Compare him with the previous lift. He's got tremendous experience and, of course, the strength needed to shift this huge weight. <laughs> he's got the incentive too. He can move further ahead of Herbal in the points table if he lifts this weight. Oh, it's smooth and efficient, yeah! and certainly looks capable of more. Nice, Mrs. Keary shouts out the instructions. Husband gets ready to obey. Being so tall, he's got a long way to pull this weight. He's got it. So, just three men left in, and the bar now will go over 900 pounds. Herit will be the first to attempt this new weight. The sun is still beating down. The grip is obviously important, but Herit with massive legs and back and shoulders, capable of pulling this weight. It's a big pull, it's perfect, and he knows it. He's in pole position now. Magnus must be feeling confident. He's passed at this weight. Come on, Riku. 420 kilos to match Baden Hurst. It's very slow, but it's moving. Come on, come on. He's shaking all over. Tremendous effort. There's going to be big smiles all round. What a performer. 430 kilos now for Magnus. This is a vital lift for him to stay in the hunt for the big points. Perfect technique with the legs first and then the back. He's got it again. The pressure goes back on the other two. Four hundred and forty kilos now, nearly at the magic one thousand pound barrier for Herit. Look at this arrogance, yes, but who can deny him with this victory? Absolutely in control of the deadlift. Having seen that, Magnus and Kiri conceding first place to Herit, perhaps a wise decision. He needed the points too. That was a great win.
Magnus a high finish once again, as does Riku, but Forbes finding the deadlift, his toughest event yet. Magnus has just said to you, he thought you could pull a lot more. He's, he's right. <laughs> For the first time in the contest, Magnus for Magnussen is starting to pull clear of the other competitors, lying four and a half points ahead of Manfred Herbel. Manfred, though, could still overtake him, as could Riku, who's desperate to win. And they go straight into battle. Herit and Riku have already scored one win each against each other in the pole push, where they must push their opponents out of the ring or onto the ground. Herit making sure he warms up. He doesn't want a repeat of last year where he injured a rib in this event. This really is a great head-to-head -head clash where strength, speed and mobility is so important. Herit really leaning into it, but he's on the retreat. Off he goes and Riku really letting rip. This normally quiet man really coming alive here and I don't think Herit likes it. Kiri giving him the evil eye. The Finn really exploded with power and followed it up with a little shove at the end. Manfred up against Boucher. Herbal, one push up already. And I think it really fancies his chances in this event. Oh, he's slipping there. And again. This is better than the first bout between the two. Now Manfred is working better, he's got him. My goodness, there's a lot of adrenaline flowing out there. Anton working so hard, but Manfred, in one of his favorite events, took him comfortably. Just take easy. Cowan is going to be on deck now. He's one push down against Magnuson. Ready. And he's in a bit of pain, as that strapping shows. OK, let's go. Magnuson will want to finish this yeah, quickly. Go, go. Better already by Forbes. He's got Magnus on the run. But Magnus definitely not letting Cowan have it all his own way. He's coming back well. Both these men have used these poles on the Highland Games circuit. And Magnuson not getting the short contest he wanted. This is fantastic. It's full of aggression from both men. Forbes almost letting him push him along a bit, and now the counter-attack. Yes, a great result for Cowan. Both men absolutely shattered. Magnuson is out of it. I think Forbes outwitted his opponent there. He let him do a lot of the work, and then suddenly he went on the attack, and it worked perfectly. But now they have to do it all over again. The deciding Whoa! push. Well, I'm not sure marvelous. either of them will actually want to get it together after that last struggle. Well, steady. Work, work, work. Power now going straight into the attack. He probably wants a quick victory now, and who can blame him? Magnuson is standing his ground. A lot of twisting and turning here. Cowan's got him, I think. Yes! That's poor points for Iceland. But Scotland and Wales are delighted. Hey, take your position though, please. Manfred back Just into his semi-final, where Onasai got a bye. Hey. It's 1-0 to Manfred already. And Joe, a little unsure as to the technicalities of this event. Manfred really leaning hard into the pole. Joe not putting all his weight behind it. But Manfred's just walked away and Odessai is down. That's a very good win for Manfred Herbal. And look at this. He outfoxed the Samoan. No doubt about it. He knew exactly the right moment to take the pressure off. And Joe knows it. Meanwhile, the heat of the day may have claimed its first victim. Forbes, you've just been called to fight in the next round. Can you make it? I don't know. I'm totally exhausted. I can hardly stand. As long as I can walk to there, I'll be there. In fact, Cowan has decided to fight on against Riku Kiri in the semi-final. But Riku is already won it. That previous fight taking a lot out of Forbes. Riku getting stuck in straight away. Oh, he 
he's taken him, and he makes his way through to the final against Manfred. Manfred, though, not looking too willing to make this trip. This event is certainly taking its toll. Well, Manfred's injured, Magnus is injured, Forbes is absolutely wrecked, so I think it's going to be a battle to the end now. If we can recover quick, I shall go to the win, I think. Forbes has really suffered here in the heat of the day and through two grueling fights. This is a very tough final. Kiri exhausted as well, but Herbal in fact throws in the towel, so he hands victory to the Finn on a plate. A mistake perhaps by Herbal, but only he knows the answer to that. Despite the extreme fatigue, I'm sure Forbes will be delighted with his six points. Well, things couldn't be closer at this point in the contest. Magnus and Manfred are neck and neck, with Riku only half a point behind them. The stage is set for a riveting last event. A fascinating situation in the build-up to this last event and a classic to finish with. The McGlashan Stones, which are now a familiar sight in Strongest Man, but there is a twist in the tale. The heights that Anton and Forbes will have to lift are staggered. The lightest stone will go in the centre, the heaviest on the outside plinth. Now, has Cowan recovered from the pole push? We'll know in a few moments, and we'll know if Anton can finish with a flourish. Hey! Anton already a shade ahead with the 90 kilogram stone, but Forbes is very experienced in this event. Anton is spot on six feet tall, so he does have to lift them higher than Forbes. But the Scotsman there looking in agony. 110 kilos now, that's 17 stones in weight for Anton. Cowan is well behind now and slowing. That one weighs 120 kilograms and then comes the big one, the 20 stone one for the last stone on top of the plinth. He's got it, 38.42 for the Namibian. And Cowan is looking totally spent. Come on now Forbes, you can finish it off. of granite, oh that's total frustration and absolute exhaustion. Manfred relaxing as much as he can, one big effort left, as there is for Herod Badenhorst at the bottom of the picture. Riku lying in third place overall, just half a point behind the leaders. Off they go, and look at this, Riku has got the first stone onto his shoulders. Martin Horst delivers his at exactly the same time. This is the fastest Riku has moved all day. Up it goes again. In fact, Herod slightly ahead. This is good by the man from Bloemfontein. Now, Riku really needs to win this one if he's going to challenge for the overall title. But Herod has got victory in his sights. Here he goes with the last one. Oh, he's dropped it. Can you believe it? Riku finishes 35.6. That is the fastest. Herod finishing now just outside Anton's time. But Riku can't believe his luck here. He really needed to set the fastest time to put the pressure on the last two men, and he did just that. The championship of 1994 will be decided in about half a minute's time and its fate is in the hands of these two men. Magnussen, the winner in 1991, and Herbal, certainly one of the most talented guys around. This is it. Riku, of course, will be watching the clock carefully. He can still win, but it's Manfred who's flying now. He won this event on the beach in week two. He's just ahead of Magnus, and it's do or die for the Icelander. Herbal is well ahead at the second. This is incredible from both men. Magnus, in fact, now in the lead at the third. This is real drama. It's Magnus, and the time is fast. This one is for the title. 29 seconds. Herbal, Kiri, and the rest are beaten. This is real emotion for Magnus van Magnussen. Well, a magnificent last event. Magnus has managed to clinch this year's title of world's strongest man by just one point. The Finn, Riku Kiri, will be disappointed, third two years in a row, but an admirable finish for Scotsman Forbes Cowan, who came fifth. Magnus, many congratulations. Did you think it would be so close at the end of two days? 
I knew it would be close all the way through. But uh, I'm happy now. Oh. That was almost, I'm going to say it's almost as good. It was better than a 100 meter <laughs> final. It was fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Oh. He <laughs> 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 oh. really deserved to win this. Uh, he was very consistent throughout all the events. So the 20 stone Icelander Magnus von Magnusson becomes the world's strongest man of 1994. A title he so desperately wanted and he's really had to work for it. Magnusson is the all-round strong man. He won two events, took two second places and placed third three times. He's a real drafter who craves for success. He never wants to give in and has a knack of exploding into form at exactly the right time. He's fast on his feet and seems oblivious to the pounding his body takes. Iceland is again the centre of attention for men of strength. So from Juliet and me, it's goodbye from World's Strongest Man 1994 here in South Africa.